Hello and thanks for watching this video. I just wanted to quickly show the power of Digital Photo Professional Canon software for editing your raw photos. Um, in this instance we're going to be using photos taken by a Canon 50D and I wanted to just show what the flexibility of a raw file offers you even with free software provided by Canon and how useful it really can be. Uh, in this in this example, I'm going to show three photos of the same subject matter, and the difference between the three photos was where I spot metered off of. So the only difference would have been if I metered off of the trees in a photo, the sky, or the ground. In this photo right here, you'll see that I actually metered <clears throat> I metered this off of the trees, and so the uh, camera exposed for the trees. In this next shot. I exposed for the sky, which means I aim the camera up at the sky, press the, the meter button half down, shutter button, and then brought it back down, recomposed, and took the shot. And you can see that the shutter speed was much quicker, we have a better exposure, and everything else can still be seen in detail. And then in this last instance here, I exposed for the ground, and you'll see that this blew the image out, obviously, and gave us a shot. Uh, that's pretty much not usable the way it is and what I wanted to show is like is basically that if not everyone goes through and takes three different metering of your images so let's say you took this photo here if you bring it is if it's a raw file and you bring it into digital photo professional you can then begin making adjustments by reducing the exposure by up to two stops and we can actually bring this photo back down now it's not going to be ideal compared to, say, exposing it properly to begin with, but we can get it pretty close and, and save a file that might have otherwise been lost. And you can make some adjustments in terms of the contrast <clears throat> to try to get it to be, be very similar. Anyhow, if you see here now, the shots look very similar in terms of exposure, even though the original photo is overexposed, and we even were able to pull back a lot of the blues in the sky. Going back to this overexposed photo, we can then also play around with the different uh, picture styles that Canon provides in their cameras. And that's another benefit of shooting in RAW is that you don't have to constantly change your settings. You don't have to choose landscape. You don't have to choose portrait. You don't have to do all that while you're shooting in the camera. You don't have to choose your white balances either. So we can go in and afterwards, you know, we can choose landscape, which is going to increase contrasts and add some saturation to your colors. We can play around until you get the kind of colors that you like. So we'll go with the landscape here. We can in increase our contrasts. We can reduce. We can do whatever it is that you want to while you're playing around with it. And it's quick and it's easy. And another benefit in the newer versions of DPP is, for instance, if we want to bring down the highlights but leave everything else, they offer some minor adjustments now where you can reduce little highlights clipped, either brights or darks. You can do that with the shadows too. Lighten up the shadows. Darken them to give more dynamic depth. And it's a pretty nice feature nowadays. It's pretty good for free software, I think. And then, of course, you can always change your saturation. And considering that the original photo <clears throat> was entirely blown out and not useful, the power of RAW lets you have so much adjustment ability in a shot like this that you can still use it, you can salvage it, and uh, pull a decent shot out of it. And uh, that's an important thing to know when you're shooting with a digital SLR and uh, why you would actually want to use a RAW file as opposed to shooting in JPEG given the size of RAW files. Uh, additional adjustments that you can make if you are indoors or outdoors, it doesn't really matter, but this white balance effect stuff is really good for when you're shooting indoors. Um, basically, you don't have to worry about white balance when you're inside. You can just let it be, and you can either hope the camera gets it right, but you, if it didn't, you can come back in and you can adjust it, and as you can see, it's changing the tint right here on the road from a, a grayish white to a red, more red, 
and you can go through and you can change the kind of lighting you have. It's extremely useful for indoor photography when you have different type of lighting situations, which the camera probably was not going to get since there's such a mixture of, of uh, compact fluorescence and you know, um, all the other tungsten bulbs and everything out there nowadays. So you can really go through and you can hit custom and you can click around and really find what you think is the proper balance in a photo. That's a really useful setting as well. And unfortunately with this particular lens uh, we have the 24 to 70 on so that's a great lens and it doesn't have a lot of optical issues in terms of chromatic aberrations or anything like that. But if we have any at all, it would be in the trees on the corners, and they're harder to spot when you're using a crop camera, because the outside corners are not subjected to the sensor. So here we have this shot, and we can go in, and let's say we had some issues with the outside corners. We can go in, and first of all, this is on by default on my version of the application, but you can turn off peripheral illumination. Peripheral illumination lightens the corners. All four corners are lit up, and this helps reduce vignetting. Um, when you shoot wide open, you often have some vignetting. If you stop down, it tends to go away when you stop down to around f8. However, um, this is a great way to get rid of it. And then another great program is if you're using a lens like the 17 to 40, which has a substantial amount of chromatic aberration, you can actually hit this button right here, chromatic aberration button, and it's going to remove for you any issues that you might have. And it's a great feature. In this particular uh, shot, we don't really have any, but it's very useful. It gets rid of it. does a great job. And the program itself is pretty quick and easy. Uh, once you're finished, you can also, with that, with those kind of adjustments, the final adjustment that you can make is you can uh, adjust your noise reduction. Um, the program has gone pretty powerful in terms of removing noise and whatnot. And I will save that for another tutorial on how to bring up a different photo that shows some noise taken at a high ISO rate. But you can make your adjustments right there, hit apply, it applies them instantly. And then when you're done with your photo, you can just go to, well, first of all, you need to do any cropping or anything like that, you would just go to the Start Trimming Tool. You can crop however it is that you want to crop. And then when you're done, you would just go to File, Convert and Save. And that's it. You're done. So I just want to thank you for watching the video.